Welcome to our lecture online. A few days ago, one of our viewers asked a very interesting question. And at first, I was kind of stumped on the question, go, yes, how do we know that? And so what the reference was, was the reference regarding cross products. Let's say we have two vectors, A and B. We can write them into the matrix format as a cross product. And then the result is we take the I unit vector and we multiply it times the product of these two elements minus the product of those two. So A2 times B3 minus A3 times B2. Then we take the negative of the J unit vector and we multiply, we multiply it times A1 times B3, A3 minus B1. And finally, plus the K unit vector times A1 times B2 minus A2 times B1. The question was, why is this negative? Where did that negative come from? So it all comes down to the point where you understand your unit vectors. You have your i vector, unit vector, your j unit vector, and the k unit vector along the x, the y, and the z axis. If we now do the cross products of our unit vectors and we use the right hand rule, you see what happens. You take your fingers and point them in the direction of i, curl them in the direction of j, and your thumb points in the direction of the positive k unit vector. So i cross j is a positive k. j cross k is a positive i because your thumb points out of the board and k cross i points in the positive j direction because of course i is pointing out of the board so k to j to i and then your thumb points in the j direction so these cross products give you the positive k i and j unit vectors but then when you reverse the product the cross product j cross i you point your fingers in the direction of j then you curl the direction of i and your thumb points downward into the negative k direction same with i and k i point my fingers in the direction of i out of the board i curl them up to k and i point in the negative j direction that's this one right here and from k to j i, I go along k i curl my fingers in the direction of j and my thumb points in the negative direction of i into the board negative i so now when we take this representation of a cross product of two vectors and we write them like this and we actually multiply the elements together notice we have three elements here and three elements there so together we'll have nine products and if we take the the cross products of the unit vectors into account you'll see what happens so let's try that so this is equal to a1 times i times b1 times i so you end up with a1 b1 times i cross i now what is i cross i we didn't put it there but notice if you do an i cross i since they're pointing in the same direction that must be equal to zero the same with j cross j since the two vectors point in the same direction two parallel vectors when we do a cross product we get zero and also k cross k that is equal to zero as well so this term will go to zero, we'll take care of that later. So now we have a1i times b2j, so we have plus a1 b2i cross j, and then we have a1 times b3, a1 b3i cross k, like this. And then we'll do the second term here, so plus a2 times b1j cross i, plus a2 times b2, a2, b2, j cross j, should be a cross, plus a2 times b3, that would be j cross k. And finally, we take the third term, plus a3, b1, k cross i, multiply this times this, plus a3, b2, k cross j and then plus a3 b3 k cross k and of course the diagonal elements i cross i j cross j k cross k they all are going to go to zero because when you multiply cross multiply parallel vectors you get zero so let's rewrite that so this is equal to zero plus well wait a minute i cross j i cross j gives me a positive k so indeed it is plus a1 b2 times a positive k unit vector then i cross k which is right here gives me minus j so that gives me plus um, where am i here 
So that term, this term, this term right here. So we have A1, B3, and let me put that in parentheses. So it would be times a minus J unit vector. So there's where our first negative J unit vector comes from. Then we have this right here. So we have J cross I. J cross I gives me negative K. So that would be um, um, A2, B1. A, so that would be plus A2, B1, J cross I. J cross I is a negative K vector, unit vector. Then this here goes to zero, plus zero. And then here we have plus a, B, J cross K, and J cross K is a positive I. So we have A2, B3 times the positive I unit vector. On the third row, we have plus K cross I. K cross I is the J positive J unit vector. So we have A3, B1, positive J unit vector. Then here we have plus A3, B2, K cross J is a minus i unit vector, minus i unit vector, and then we have plus zero. Okay. Now, let's simplify this and see what we get. First, we have the i unit vectors. We have one here, and we have a negative one there. So we can write this as a2, b3, minus a3, b2, times the i unit vector, and this negative goes over here. Now the j unit vector, we have a positive j and a negative j. So this will write plus a3b1, a3b1 minus a1b3 times the positive j unit vector, and then the k unit vector, we have a positive here and a negative here. So we have plus a1b2 minus a2b1, a2b1 times the k unit vector. Now, you might say, well, where did the negative go? We have a positive there, but not so fast. Take a look over here. Notice that this term right here looks exactly like what we have over here. The third term, a1b2 minus a2b1, looks exactly like what we have over here with the k unit vector. But the middle one, this one right here, Notice here we have A3B1 minus A1B3, where here we have A1B3 minus A3B1. If we reverse the order of these, then we have to change the sign, and we end up with a negative J. So essentially, this becomes, if we want to write in that form, I times A2B3 minus A3B1. And here, we'll write this as a minus J, reversing these two terms. So again, I'll use the red to indicate that. So minus the J unit vector times A1B3 minus A3B1. And now it looks just like what we have over there. And then plus the K unit vector times A1B2 minus A2B1. And again, notice that this now looks exactly what we have over there. And that's why we need a one there because the methodology in which we find and define how we calculate the cross product using the matrix format, we need a negative to make sense out of it all. And that is where that negative comes from. Now, in case you're wondering, this is the answer. <laughs> but I know you already knew that. You're a mathematician. I'm a physicist. So therefore, this is kind of exciting to me. All news. <laughs> I know, you knew this already for a long time. I didn't. I thought this was pretty neat. <laughs>